Hello, buddy. How's it going? I'm doing good, man. Great. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Attention. <laughs> <laughs> we're all going to give you electronics now. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Your pick of phones. There you go. So, um, so season three, you know, took place in Gotham, and we wrapped up. And now you're going on a road trip. And I don't know. Here we're stopping in Metropolis, but what can you tell us? You know, just to get us started, what can you tell us about what's coming up? The fans can be excited about. Yeah. Well, uh, you're right. Um, where we left off in season three, the Titans kind of bundled up into an RV and headed off into the sunset. Back to San Francisco, ostensibly, right. perhaps, but right. by Metropolis, uh, by Metropolis, yeah. So circumstances kind of arise where the Titans get the opportunity to go and, and visit Metropolis, and um, that's particularly significant for Connor because he, obviously, both of his parents hail from Metropolis. So I guess you could say that the introduction of those parents to the show. Um, and having a Lex Luthor this season, that we actually have a physical Lex Luthor that we can, that we meet and get to interact with, and um, that's kind of the kicking off point for the action um, this season. And uh, there are some twists and turns, and without spoiling anything, yeah, I, I'd say that's kind of the the inciting event of the season is that first encounter between um, Connor and Lex. Great. So, do you think with like Lex's introduction, it will cause Connor to have like some type of self discovery? Like, yeah. And that he's like, you know, been like, eating since season two. Because we're really like, he just kind of got thrown in there. We never really got to like see his, yeah. you know. Absolutely. It's similar for, for both the audience and Connor himself, right? Because uh -huh. he, Lex is someone who he's only heard about from other people yeah. and kind of observed from afar. Mm -hmm. So now he gets the opportunity to finally meet this guy and it's a situation where expectations meet reality and Connor has to kind of initially make the decision to go and meet him in person, which is, that decision itself is approached with a lot of trepidation. We've got the other Titans, Dick included, or maybe mostly Dick, kind of cautioning him against that, and Connor's fueled by this intense curiosity and this desire to to, to meet this guy and, and find out, you know, why why did you create me? Why am I here? What's my purpose? Who are you to me? Are you my father, or am I just a, a, a tool or a weapon to you? So um, it, it creates a very uh, interesting dynamic there. Yeah, it's a, that's definitely a long time coming. Yeah, you know, like you said, we been wanting to see that since forever and like I'm glad you guys finally got to you know this is gonna be a season where we can focus on Connor and like where yeah. who he is and like you know because we've seen the other Titans have their self discovery so I think it's yeah. Connor's turn now to get you know, he does, but I think one of the great things about this season, because um, we kind of have a, a little more of a condensed cast this time around, um, so we have kind of the, the, the six main times, and because of that, the, this season does a really great job of balancing all of those different stories and all those different character arcs, so it doesn't really feel like, you know, one, one of the characters is elevated at the expense of any of the others. Everyone kind of has their moment to shine, and they have their own storylines, and they have their own character arcs and everything kind of feels uh, very balanced in that way. But yes, Connor in particular does get to, to delve deeper into his uh, self-discovery and um, yeah, as you say, discovering his identity. Awesome. I have a question. We're talking about car character development, right? You have such an important role in terms of uh, this character's legacy going back yeah. years and years and yeah. you have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, interesting takes on different yeah. interactions of it. How do you prepare for this and tackle this all together? Well, um, a lot of that work um, on my end in terms of research and preparation uh, took place in season two when I was first cast. Um, because at that point, I didn't really know which direction we were going to go. I, didn't, I knew that I was going to play Superboy, but I'd only had brief conversations with um, Greg, our showrunner, about you know which version is this, where, what kind of interpretation is this going to be. Um, and he kind of explained to me that, yeah, you can go back and look at the source material, but this is a fresh interpretation. This is going to be our own thing. It's our own version. Um, so what I wanted to do, my approach was to, I wanted a comprehensive view of the character and a, and a good understanding of his history over the years and the different iterations that have come before me so that I could maybe kind of take aspects from those to, to play with in my interpretation. But ultimately, we, by this point, season four, I feel like our version 
and I guess my, myself as an actor playing the character, we've come into our own and now we've established this version of the character and, and we get to see where we can go with this version. So it's, it, it kind of stands apart and as you say, it joins the huge continuity of yeah. the legacy of the character. Awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, no worries. Um, random question, sorry. Um, so DC has like 18,000 different versions of everything. Is yes. there, is there like um, the movies or like one of the animated series that you would like to like cameo on? Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, there's just something about the scale of those movies, right? Especially, you know, the what Zack Snyder was doing with the with the DC Extended Universe and those series of films, and um, just just seeing all these big characters on the big screen and with big effects and, and music and all of kind of the classic stories reinterpreted for modern audiences. I think that that, to me, hypothetically, would be the most exciting thing to be a part of. Not that I'm not excited about Titans, but it, Titans aside, if I got to cameo in something else, I think I think the movies would be the most fun. You know, those kind of big movies, and then in particular, the Justice League style team up movies, where it's a bunch of characters crossing over from you know different worlds and stuff. So, yeah. Now then shifting focus, you know, we're at New York Comic Con. I saw, I think, on Instagram or Twitter that, you know, you've kind of been out on the floor, uh, yeah. but it's been incognito. Has anyone recognized you? What's that been like? Have you seen people dressed as your character? A few people. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I didn't really know what to expect because I'd never been to a, a big Comic Con of this scale before. Um, and one of the main reasons I wanted to come was so that I could go out onto the floor and, and explore. And I was, as I, I think I said on that post, that Instagram post, I was a immediately overwhelmed by just the, the amount of people that were there and the, the amount of things that were going on and the, the cosplay and um, immediately got a sense of how small and insignificant I was and I, it's, it's cool to interact with fans and I really enjoy that but um, the, the kind of can, any concerns for anonymity went out the window pretty much immediately once I got a taste of the scale of this Comic Con and, and how many more interesting and exciting things were, were happening. And um, it was a real, uh, a real treat, a real privilege to, to walk around and uh, experience it because um, we don't really have, I'm from Australia, we don't really have anything to, uh, on that same level yet, you know, as, as New York. So it's, it's, yeah, it's been really fun. So I know you're saying that you did kind of touch the source material on Superboy, but like this was also your own interpretation. Right. But from the stuff that you have read, is there anything that caught your eye that you're like, oh, I'd love to see Connor do this one day? Yeah, it's that you can kind of maybe say. Or um, there are so many cool and 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 different. Uh, versions of this character. Um, this season, without giving anything away, we did draw from certain comics and from uh, certain visual ideas that have been used in the past. Um, that'll become clear later once the seasons come out. Um, I think it would be great. <laughs> the uh, screw a stick, yeah. I think, I think it would be great to have <laughs> the uh, the the new 52 suit, okay. the red and black. I think would make a really cool super suit to, to on TV. Um, so I would say, I would say that that would be cool. That's something I'd like. Is there to see. like you've like ever approached Greg and be like, hey, can we maybe try to try, like get this? I mean. I... <laughs> It's not something I've really had to fight for just yet okay. because I'm, I'm, I think my character is so well served on this show that I, I'm very grateful for all the all the character development and the, the great story that we get to tell with Connor. But um, there was a little moment with, with LJ who does the super suits earlier in the season where um, she was like, hey, we should do something with you. Maybe uh, maybe season five, so who knows? All right, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't think you enjoyed that.